Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. And I just wanted to make this short video. It is not an unboxing because everything is already unboxed, but just wanted to share my haul that I received today in the mail from Odom's. Um, I was led to Odom's by Jess Stone. A big shout out to Jess Stone if you're watching or I'll probably uh, send a link to this video to you on Facebook because I totally appreciate um, you getting me on to Odom's. Um, and the reason for this haul, as, as I'm giving a shout out to Jess, was because I have forever been looking for Dendrobium Johnsonii, which in my heart is the queen of La Turia Dendrobiums. And if anyone who knows me or uh, has been following this channel, they will know that besides Angricoids, I love Laturia dendrobiums, and uh, in particular, I especially love Dendrobium Johnsonii um, for the sheer beauty of it. Um, it is totally a pristine white uh, flower with the petals that stick out like wings, and it's just very beautiful. Simple, but very elegant, and it's it holds its flowers up up high and proud and she is totally a queen and if you would ask me what i would think the, the king would be uh i would probably say dendrobium alexand alexandri um just because uh it's kind of uh unusual in that uh it has the stripes and the 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 spots and the spot, spots and the hairs and the stripes it is a uh, similar to spectabile but it's not as crazy as spectabile it has the sword uh, pointed lip um, very deep uh, purple tongue but anyway I would say that is the king of the Latoria dendrobiums in my heart I would say with Perhaps uh, Spectabile, Dendrobium Spectabile being the, the crazy king or the insane king. Who knows? Um, but anyway, this is the reason for this haul. And another reason why I'm extremely grateful is because it indeed came with... Uh, I was already satisfied when I pulled the package out wrapped, um, seeing that it was not a seedling size. I mean, this is still not a fully matured plant. Um, this is uh, probably about the size of the mature, as, as it is as a mature plant, maybe this level, not up there. So it is still a moderate sized plant, um, but it will bloom off of shorter, more young canes, which obviously um, this being a first time blooming on this plant, I really can't expect it to bloom again next year until the canes get to be probably this size. So, but anyhow, the fact that, and you know, unless these buds blast, I'm going to see blooms and they're going to be the most beautiful blooms and I will share them with you. Um, this plant is in so many crosses, uh, Peter Shin, uh, Roy Tokunaga, um, lots of them that I can't, silver wings, uh, just, just so many. Um, but anyhow, that is Laturia dendrobium uh, New Guinea species. Um, let me see, and I will refer over here my very well used orchid book that is falling apart. But in this book, what this says about dendrobium johnsonii is and this is a picture of the flower, as you can see. Very elegant flower. Uh, there we go. Kind of a sword pointed lip, as well as, like I, like I said, uh, Alexandra. But I just love that. It's very simple, very pristine, very regal. So, yeah, large flowers, New Guinea. Uh, likes it up in the trees, mountain forests, moderate altitudes. That's very important. Uh, roots are very susceptible to rot, although they do like it, like their roots wet and cool. cool. Whereas the upper part of the plant, um, they do like it in the, the, they do like, can stand the heat. 
um, but they do like their roots to be hydrated and cool, if that makes any sense. So it would make sense to plant or have some uh, have some uh, pieces of sphagnum in the media alongside uh, bark or even lava rock to supply the extra moisture that it does like. But, you know, you do have to be careful on uh, how much water or how much, uh, how long that the media stays wet because the, rot, the roots will rot and we just can't lose this plant. So that's what it says about Johnsonii. So happy to have this. One of my most favorite dendrobiums, I would say, is probably number one. Okay, the other thing that came from my, of course I had to get other things, couldn't just get one. Really wouldn't have been worth the shipping and it was sort of an unknown thing, a quantity, because it just said three inch pot. So I had no idea what I was getting. So I am so grateful for that. So anyway, the next thing that I got were uh, Odom's makes uh, a lot of uh, encyclia crosses. So I love encyclias and uh, because they are fragrant, lots of them have a lot of nice colors. So I got this cross, which is Encyclia Diurna, which I think is from Cuba. It is, uh, I believe it is a yellow Encyclia with a white lip. It is fragrant, it gets a long inflorescence, perhaps uh, a couple feet long. And the other one it is crossed with is, uh, looks like Albax, well, I can't pronounce it, but there's the name. And this is, uh, it's a brown or a orange color encyclia that is also fragrant. Okay, and the next encyclia cross that I got is Encyclia Judy Rose Rob's something. Rob's. Anyway, I'll put the name in the description below. Times Encyclia Randy Jamaican, Jamaican Odom something. And I don't know what these are. I believe... If I can remember from the picture, they look similar to uh, one of the one of the one of the parents in this in this uh, mix is uh, Cordigera, Cordigera, maybe Tampensis as well, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Cordigera. Okay, another thing that I got, which I'm very happy to have, and it's I got a bigger size of this. This is a six inch pot. This is Toshiaoki, BLC Toshiaoki Pizzazz, which is probably my most favorite Cattleya, which I have, but it didn't have the best of winter. So we'll see if it makes it through, but I have that one. And this is Cattleya, crossed with Cattleya Violacea Muse, which I have as well. And uh, Toshiaoki is an old favorite, old, I, would, I don't know if it's an heirloom, probably, but uh, when I first started growing orchids, a uh, class of orchids that they described as being art shades, which we would call them today uh, flaring petals. Um, but art shades were more pastel y colors, more autumn colors, I would say. Uh, orange flowers with, uh, or yellow flowers, where the, the petals were, uh, there were flaring of uh, fuchsia. Just whatever color it was pink purple flaring and they that those were typically called art shades back in the day um today i think they're just called uh uh i don't know whatever whatever they're called um anyhow this plant is very special uh both both parents are very special cattleya violacea is grows in the habitat where they hang over running water and they hang on the ends of branches to where they get lots of sun and then they get lots of moisture. So, but they also like to be dry by the end of the day. So they like a very fast drying media. Um, this is what the flower looks like, very typical. Muse, I think has some flaring, as I was saying, on the corners of the leaves, perhaps more of a red, Flaring, maybe white. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. But the it is the same flat looking flower with the, the curved back leaf, curved back petals. Um, and that is Violacea. Um, and so Toshiaoki crossed with that should be a pretty interesting plant. Toshiaoki is yellow with red flaring. And I'll try to put a 
picture of it up because it did bloom for me last year. And then the last thing that I got from Odom's is this cat lay across, which I don't know what the, well, I do know what the parents are from pictures on their website, but um, other than the name, you can go and look it up. This is another, uh, the cross, well, it has uh, two cat layers that are similar to this cross, in fact, um, but I believe it's, the flowers are produced on a smaller plant. Um, but irrespectively, the end result is a uh, yellow flower with red flaring or a red flower with yellow flaring. Um, so a very beautiful thing. Um, and I saw it on their website and had to have it. And that was my Odom's order. Um, I did uh, yesterday get another order. It was an eBay order. And these were all order, ordered from different vendors. Uh, to, so let, I'm going to throw these in this one as well. This is uh, Dimorphus, Dimorph, Dimorphorchus rossii. Um, I lost both of my Dimorphorchus plants that I had. Uh, they succumbed to, well, my greenhouse got too cold and I won't go through that whole story. Um, but this was one of the casualties. I lost my Loei as well. So, But I had to get another one. One came available on eBay, so I snatched it up. Um, these plants are being reviewed right now by John Greco and uh, Roger Frampton and Danny and Rachel and I don't know if there's anyone else but they all have the they all have the Rossii actually and so I won't talk about that plant because I know if you're watching this video you probably watch their videos and they've already talked about this plant so um, but anyway this is a very special plant very expensive but I'm glad that it's the size that it is it is it's still a seedling um, but very happy to have it the other thing that I got which is another special plant that I would say is a uh, bucket list plant and this is formerly Encyclia citrina this is now I believe it's Eukyle Eukyle citrina or Eukyle Eukyle I believe it's Eukyle but this is still uh, marked as Encyclia citrina. Um, this is uh, sort of a cousin to Encyclia marii. marii. Um, these typically grow upside down, so I really haven't decided what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to leave it in here or take it out. This is probably the good time to take it out and put it in something else more permanent since it does have a small new growth coming on, which is a very good sign. Um, I did... Uh, soak this really good when I got it yesterday and the roots did come back really look really green so that's a good thing as well um, I do have one that I have which is probably a little bit bigger than this um, but it looks pretty haggard right now it's just went through its very first winter with me and I was afraid that I was gonna lose it it is mounted um, when I do my greenhouse update one of these days or months I will point it out to you just as a reference since I mentioned it, but these plants, um, these plants are more of a cooler growing plant. Uh, their native habitat is, um, well, let, me, let me read it to you. Looks like they grow in cool to intermediate conditions. Uh, they, they're basically from Mexico. Um, from cool forests, but I have heard that they can take it um, in intermediate conditions, and that's what I plan to attempt to give it. And this is the flower, and it is very fragrant, and as you can tell by the name Citrina, that it is uh, a citrus, lemony, uh, citron sort of scent. And that's that. Okay, and my last but not least, which is another plant that I've been desiring for a while. I had actually ordered it on eBay from India, as a matter of fact, and it never arrived. So um, I found these this last week on eBay, and I had to snatch them up. They actually had two types. This is Dendrobium falconieri. This is the India type, and the, uh, there's another one that is from China. Thailand there's one from China that was available on eBay but those went very quickly 
the difference, the India version, I believe, is supposed to have a larger flower, but it does look pretty much the same. And these flowers, uh, this plant grows similar to a lot of the uh, deciduous dendrobiums that you have are already familiar with, the anosmum, the puridii, crystallinum, uh, pendula, pen, pendula, pendulum, the, the list is on, goes on and on, uh, even Lodigesii. Uh Well, not necessarily Lodigesii. The flowers look more along the lines of more like a primulinum. Um, well, they look actually more like uh, Finlianum, but Finlianum, I wouldn't call it a deciduous dendrobium. Um, but these are deciduous dendrobiums, but it, is, it does have a deep purple uh, flower with yellow in the lip or yellow around the petals. Um, it is a fragrant flower. Stems are very slender and thin. I'm not sure that they are this thin. I'm sure there is some maturing yet to be done, but because this is just a baby, um, the canes can get to be several meters long. Um, and they do form roots along the stems and like to attach to things. So there are several uh, dilemmas posed with this plant on how to even mount it. Um, so we would do our best, as, as with all uh, deciduous dendrobiums, it does appreciate a drier rest. Actually, you taper off the water with this one. And then I believe around November, December, you cut it out, watering and fertilizer until it shows new growth. And I did water this when I got it, but I don't know if those are new growths or not. I, my sense is that that could be a new growth. So I think that I'm going to, when I decide if I'm going to mount it, which I probably will do because these do best mounted, I will um, mount it pendently and we'll take it from there. Um, I think I've covered everything. And I know I showed you this earlier, but I've had this for a minute. And at first, when it opened, I thought it was pretty terrible. But I've grown to appreciate it. And it's my spider lily dendrobium, which I think is has looking better the more the longer that it's opened. Anyway, thanks for watching.